couple of months ago, I was surfing the trending page in a vain attempt to see if I could find a creator on the rise that I would actually like. I sincerely love to support smaller YouTubers that make quality content and generally have a passion for what their audiences consume. Fortunately for me, I found a YouTuber by the name of Chamberlain Paintings, a dad slash painter that traveled around different parts of San Francisco to paint settings that are honestly quite inspired and beautiful. He also has some pretty thought-provoking discussions such as school can be hell for creative kids and thoughts on education. I sincerely recommend his channel and I'm including a link below so check it out if you need some time to relax and chill. Anyways, I appreciate Michael Chamberlain's content, but there was something kind of strange about his comment section when I watched my first video of his, I got laughed at. My original perception was that mostly middle-aged parents and adults would be commenting about how he is probably an inspiration for them to take up painting. Basically, I thought Michael would have a primarily older audience. Let's just say that I was greeted with something very unexpected. Comments like, we love a dangerous queen that walks down the middle of the streets by Danny Peep and you're an angel and I would die for you by Jeanette Q were not the type of comments I was expecting from a mostly middle-aged crowd. Basically, Annie R sums up my thoughts on the surprises I found in the comment section. It's funny to see two types of commenters on these videos, Emma fans and actual artists lol. Love your videos. Okay, I'm definitely going to get blasted for this, but at the time, I had no idea who Emma Chamberlain was. I was guessing maybe some relative to Michael Chamberlain, but my guess was as good as anyone else's. So I decided to go looking for her on YouTube and see what kind of content I found, and oh wow, she's a riot. You so fucking precious when you smile. Hit it from the back and drive you wild yeah, yeah, yeah. Girl, I lose myself up in those eyes I just had to let you I'm a little sorry for sounding like an old grandpa, but unfortunately, I have an old soul. I can definitely appreciate this kind of content when I'm in the mood, but sometimes I just come to YouTube to chill, listen to beats, and, you know, have a good time. Her content is very engaging, and I definitely appreciate it for what it is. I also linked her channel below. Recently, from what I understand, Emma Chamberlain has gotten into a string of controversies which are all intertangled and things I do not care to discuss. I think there was a bullying scandal which got debunked, something about selling merchandise for a ridiculously exorbitant price that people are still spewing and fuming over, and the whole VidCon issue. So Emma Chamberlain has embroiled herself into some scandals which in my opinion are mistakes. She also has a dad that has an active social media and has quite valiantly defended her on YouTube. Gee, I wonder who these two resemble. Oh, it's just Greg Paul and his two sons, Jake Paul and Logan Paul. Now, before you go on a tangent and say, well, Logan Paul and Jake Paul have been involved in severely, drastically different scandals on YouTube, bear in mind I'm not going into detail about the scandals of the daughters and sons, but rather their father's social media content. Emma Chamberlain, Jake Paul, and Logan Paul's combined litany of mistakes can be covered in its own separate video and has been well documented by other YouTubers, so I don't want to go into it. But now we come into the real meat of the video, a tale of two dads, Greg Paul and Michael Chamberlain. So for this video, I decided to watch four of Michael Chamberlain and Greg Paul's videos and chose them by selecting two of their most popular videos and least popular videos by views. For Greg Paul, I chose these videos. For Michael Chamberlain's videos, I chose the following four.
So let's start with Greg Paul. I only discovered Greg Paul when he was in Jake Paul's video where he's kissing a woman that is several years younger than him. So I was kind of left with a bad taste in my mouth early on. However, I believe in giving people second chances, so I went into watching his videos with an open mind. After watching the videos aforementioned, I can safely assume that I'll never meet a character like him, because that's exactly what he is, a cartoonish and outlandish character. He is a pretty strange guy. He seems fundamentally interested in himself and incredibly aggressive. When I first started watching his videos, I wanted to know whether he displayed any inappropriate behavior to girls several years younger than him in the past. I found this video highline slacklining for Logan Paul vs. Hot German Girls, with a caption on the thumbnail stating, German girls think I'm hot. Unfortunately, I could not do any more research into looking into this very peculiar video because the sound seems to have been removed from it entirely. I'm not the only one with this problem either. This must have been done fairly recently because other comments from about a year ago seem to be reacting to the contents of this vlog. Oh well, such is my luck. Greg Paul reminds me of a stereotypical father who wants to be involved with his son's lives as much as possible, reap the benefits of their fame, and also be extremely cool. Like any good father, he seems incredibly proud of what his sons have accomplished. However, Mr. Paul also wants a spotlight for himself. Somehow, some way, whenever he is discussing his sons, he manages to include or mention himself on how he raised them and how they essentially would not be this way if it were not for him. Okay, so I don't know who this chach is. <laughs> Logan's covering up his face, but I hope he doesn't strike Logan because it'll be a really bad day for that guy. One thing that Logan and Jake know how to do is they know how to handle themselves. We kind of grew up growing a little MMA, State qualified wrestlers, fifth in state for Logan, both played football. My boys are, my boys know how to handle themselves. And so do I. He apparently was actively telling his sons who and who not to trust when it comes to managers, as related in the Martinez twins incident. Is beyond me, I have no idea, but I do know one thing. That the new manager that they have, her name is Morgan Terrell. Morgan, worked with Jake when Jake first got started on the Ego Tour and uh, Morgan was struggling to make things happen. She made us a lot of promises and Jake made some money from a tour that he did with her and she ended up not paying him what she owed him and Pam and I, because we were in charge at the time because Jake was under 18, uh, we, we canned Morgan and uh, she still never paid us what she owed us. And then she recently reappeared and reached out to Jake. And for some reason, Jake decided to give her another shot and try to talk to her. And I told Jake, do not trust her. Do not use her. She lied to us before in the past and stuff. She still owes you money. Do not use her. And then she was like, hey, I'm going to get in with the mark. You know, I want to, Jake, I'm going to come in. I'll help manage your people. We'll work out something together. We'll kind of be a team. And I said, Jake, you have an incubator of people, and you're just going to hand feed her all these, all these, all this talent. Why do you even need her? Just run it yourself. He decided to give her a chance. She speaks Spanish. She had a connection with the Martinez twins. And I don't know this for certain, but I'm 99% sure the Martinez twins are going her way. I'm sure she had a lot to do with it. And bottom line is, I told Jake flat out, don't trust her, don't use her, don't do anything with her. Just like when Max came on board, the first day I met Max, I told Jake, do not use Max, do not trust him. And you know what? Max ended up leaving. And everybody found out later that I was right about him. I was right about Morgan. He also supposedly had some type of anti-bullying campaign that he was progressing, but from the looks of it, it seems like a slaver tax to improve his image. Also want to let you know, um, we're still working on the anti-bullying campaigns, getting a lot of DMs and a lot of emails from people that, that are into it and want to help. All this attention that he places on himself, unfortunately reveals his flaws, with this very embarrassing point he made in his video. Laura Holmes at L underscore cat 17 asks, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be and what would you do? Wow, 
you know, I don't know the world well enough, but if I could go anywhere, I'd probably want to go to space. Can I go to space? Does that count? World. It, it's Is it not world? <laughs> out of this world. That's See, what I'm out of the world. Out. But you know, I'm being a Mary. That's true. He's not staying being within the limitations. Yeah, so. So your answer, well, Laura, is space. Yeah, I might go to space. Boom, 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 boom. Dabbing on those haters. And then this is for the internet detectives. What what do you what do you guys think I'm doing right now? Like what what did that and then if I stick this pen in my nose, what does that mean? figure that one out. Overall, Greg Paul is exactly what you would expect from the small snippet we saw in Jake Paul's video, a very strange, outlandish man. We love a suffering sister. <laughs> All right, let's go. Now, moving on to Michael Chamberlain. Emma Chamberlain's father seems to come from a completely different stratosphere from Greg Paul. Most of his videos, from what I watch, seem to present him as a down-to-earth father interested in exploring his creative side through art. Whenever his daughter appears in his videos, he seems to be constantly focused on her, which is especially apparent in the Banana Light and Midnight Trip videos. Something that I found severely lacking in Greg Paul's videos was his ability to admit his own mistakes and shortcomings. This is in an abundance in Michael Chamberlain's videos. He's not afraid to tell his audience about how he made some mistakes in middle school and in high school and is still on a quest to find out how he can best express himself creatively and artistically. Um, I went to school up to 8th grade back east in New Jersey. Was not a good student. I wasn't like bad, but I was not just kind of average, you know? And didn't take really difficult classes or any of that. I would say I was probably average to maybe poor student. And then in high school, moved out to California and started high school, uh, started eighth grade out in California, um, no, started freshman year in high school out in California and did not do well at all. I was like really bad um, freshman, sophomore. Junior year, I did kind of turn it around a little bit, almost at the end of junior year. Um, and even though my parents are both college educated, for some reason there wasn't a lot of talk about college in my family. I'm not sure why that was. Uh, my dad was super busy because we'd moved to California and he was just like starting a business and whatever. And I don't know, it just never really came up. But <clears throat> so junior year I got into this band with some guys at school and um, they were all college bound. One was going to UCLA, one was going to Boulder or whatever. And they're like, hey Mike, where are you going to college? And I'm like, I don't know, community college? And they're like, what? They're like, you need to go down and talk to Miss Schneider, who is like, uh, or Mrs. Schneider, who was like the guidance counselor. And like, you've got like literally a few months left here. You could, you know, you can, you know, what are your, what are your grades, you know, or whatever. I didn't even really pay any attention to it. But in comparison to Greg Paul's videos, there's a significant amount of quiet moments where Michael is simply painting a landscape, removing things for his daughter in her apartment. It gives the viewer time to de-stress and reflect on anything he has stated in his video. Overall, it makes for a less stressful viewing experience than watching Greg Paul's videos. I honestly thought I would find some common thread linking these two parents since their children have recently been involved in scandals within the past year. Perhaps how they reacted would be similar or maybe the type of content they upload to YouTube would have a consistent and connected tone. Unfortunately, I found none of these characteristics, which left me thoroughly disappointed. I hope you find this video informative, and I'll see you soon. Peace!